Да. Окей, это the last talk of our conference is by Professor Belishev, uh, Triangle of Characterization of Functional Models of Operators and Systems. Uh -huh. Please. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, uh, the, the subject is very close to the one of uh, Sergei that was given in the previous part of our of our session. Uh, the, uh, what is the activity? Uh, the, re the reason of this activity. Well, once again, uh, we are very interested in clarification of background of uh, it is it's a kind of theory of inverse problems uh, we are interested in relations with uh, another mathematical disciplines uh, uh, concretely in this case uh, in connections with uh, uh, with functional analysis and with uh, functional models of uh, operators and the reason is that uh, uh, a lot of uh, important uh, dynamic inverse problems are solved by one uh, by the same scheme and uh, the uh, main features of the scheme is the subject of of the talk the main ingredient is uh, the triangular factorization of operators roughly speaking solve to solve uh, to recover for instance uh, Riemannian manifold via uh, via boundary inverse data is to in fact is to factorize some uh, operator to provide some triangle factorization of operator and by the way historically uh, Mark Grigorich Crane one of the pioneers of uh, inverse problems uh, contemporary inverse problems uh, uh, I heard that uh, he said that uh, if one solves, uh, if anybody solves uh, inverse problem but does not recognize uh, the triangle factorization background, it means that it, uh, it, it, uh, he does not uh, understand uh, completely. <laughs> the problem. Sure, it is overstatement, it is maybe a joke, but nevertheless, uh, something like this uh, really hope. So, okay, let's begin with uh, trivial case of matrix factorization. Uh, very well known uh, at, uh, student level problem. We have uh, a positive definite uh, matrix, matrix, uh, and uh, the problem is uh, to find uh, upper triangular matrix V such that, uh, which provides uh, this, uh, this equality. And uh, as is well known, uh, this factorization is always uh, realizable. Uh, it is not unique, but if we add this uh, conditional on the diagonal of the factor, then the factorization, the factorization becomes becomes uh, becomes unique and uh, the proof is uh, also very simple we take uh, standard basis in the space and uh, then uh, re uh, rebuild it uh, reorganize it by uh, orthogonalization with respect to this uh, bilinear form determined by the operator under factorization. And uh, then uh, we consider the map, which uh, the operator which maps new basis into old one. And uh, this map uh, provides triangle factorization. It's a student exercise. Now uh, let, us, uh, uh, let us look at the same mat matrix factorization uh, from the operator viewpoint, also in finite dimensional case. Uh, so let F be a, a final dimensional case, and uh, F is the nest. It is a terminology, traditional terminology for this object. It is the family of extending subspaces. 
in the space. In Russian terminology, it is a chain, but uh, on the west, uh, uh, by the way, to say that it is a nest, uh, in a sense, is more, is more uh, reasonable. So let us consider the nest and the corresponding oper uh, orthogonal projections, uh, each x, x k uh, projects on the corresponding uh, member, uh, corresponding uh, term of the nest. Okay, and uh, let us consider, uh, uh, let us consider an operator here, and it's said to be in the space, it's said to be triangular with respect, with respect to this nest, if uh, this relation, uh, if this relation holds, or equivalent, equivalently in terms of projections, uh, this, uh, uh, the following relation holds. Holds. Now consider one more, one more uh, uh, finite dimensional Hilbert space, and uh, an operator from F to H, uh, and uh, we deal with the injective, with, with index, injective operator, and uh, this operator. Uh, induces uh, determines the nest in uh, in uh, the image space uh, in H, and uh, the nest is uh, of the fo so following form, and it is the corresponding orthogonal projections in images in the in the space in the space H, and uh, with this object we uh, we associate uh, an operator which acts from F to H of this form, which is said to be diagonal of the operator W, of the operator W. The reason of this term, uh, the motivation of this term is that at the level of, uh, at the level of uh, ma uh, in, in matrix interpretation, such an operator is really provides just a diagonal of uh, the operator of the operator double W matrix the, the diagonal. And uh, now the first proposition, the first, pro the first proposition is uh, the following. If we consider the operator adjoint to the diagonal and, uh, and uh, provide its uh, polar decomposition, it is a phase part and that's module of this module of this operator. Then uh, the phase part is a unitary operator which uh, which relates which relates uh, the nest basis in H and E in H and F. Uh, this is. Uh, uh, this is uh, the result, uh, uh, which is quite analogous to the matrix uh, matrix case, and uh, there is the result, which ex uh, which explains the role of the diagonal in in factorization. If we have the positive definite operator in uh, uh, in uh, finite dimensional space. Uh, and uh, we have a nest we have in F and we have a nest in F, then, uh, then there exists, uh, 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 then uh, there exists the triangular factorization of this operator, the so-called canonical triangular factorization of this form, which is uh, constructed uh, from uh, the uh, square root of C and the corresponding phase operator of, of the diagonal. Uh, so uh, it is interpretation of the matrix factorization in operator terms. And the main uh, element of this interpretation is the diagonal of the square root of the operator under factorization. Now let us consider the continual case. My, uh, uh, the continual case. So F is uh, in finite dimensional Hilbert space. 
And a nest, uh, term, uh, I, uh, I clarify the, the terminology. A nest in F is a family of subspaces, uh, the uh, increasing family of, of subspaces and corresponding projections. And uh, the necessary to be continuous if uh, the family of corresponding projections uh, is continuous in the relevant in natural in, in the natural operator in the natural operator's sense. And uh, let W be uh, an operator from F to a Hilbert space also H. And uh, this operator determines the image of this nest H. Uh, it is also the family of extending operators. Uh, for this case, for, uh, for this case, for this continuous case, which was uh, in the use in uh, um, finite dimensional case. Uh, we take uh, our nests are parameterized. Uh, the parameter S runs from zero to T capital, and we uh, divide this segment by points and construct, uh, take uh, the corresponding projections in F and in images in image space H and construct a, a straightforward analog of uh, the matrix diagonal. Then uh, we claim that uh, uh, the limit of this integral Riemannian sum, sums, sure if exists, in, in the sense of weak operator convergence, is said to be the diagonal of the operator of the operator W. It's straightforward continuous analog analog of the uh, of the uh, matrix, uh, matrix construction, finite, finite dimensional construction. And it is uh, the construction of uh, the known kind of uh, operator integrals, which was introduced by Crane and Brodsky. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, nevertheless, uh, the, uh, our construction, which is presented here, is uh, slightly different, uh, but the difference uh, is uh, rich, rich in content, I will say it about later on. And now, uh, how does this construction work in continual triangular factorization? Uh, first of all, what is triangularity? We have some operator V in F, and we have a nest, for instance, continuous nest F, in F, and the operator V is said to be triangular with respect to this nest, if uh, the following holds, uh, quite similarly to uh, finite dimensional, dimensional case. And now we are able to, uh, to formulate a theorem. The theorem is the following. Uh, we work in a Hilbert space F, and uh, C is injective positive operator. Uh, I would like to stress that we don't need C to be a positive definite, just injective, just positive. Uh, zero may be, uh, the point zero may be the point of spectrum of this operator C. It can, it can be, it can be not uh, bounded invertible. That's a principal difference with uh, classical construction. So let F be uh, continuous nest, C the operator of this kind, uh, square root of C is, uh, it's clear what is that, and uh, assume that the square root does possess the diagonal of this form, where P tilde is the projection onto the images as before, as before. And uh, moreover, we assume that uh, this diagonal has, a, this diagonal has a, the full valued image uh, range, full val uh, valued range. Then, okay, uh, it's our assumptions. And now the formulation, let uh, 
the uh, this star is uh, the adjoint uh, the operator adjoint to this diagonal and phi star is uh, its uh, uh, phase part in the power decomposition then uh, the factory uh, then uh, operator C admits factor triangular factorization of this form with the canonical factor of this form. It is straightforward natural analog of uh, finite dimensional uh, factorization. Now I, uh, I, I will try to explain uh, what is the relation of this construction to the functional models of operators and uh, eventually to the inverse problems. And uh, uh, once again, as is the previous talk, let L0 be a, a symmetric operator, positive definite symmetric operator uh, in the Hilbert space H. And we introduce also its uh, extension by Friedrichs. Uh, L is its extension by, Fri by Friedrichs with the same uh, low bound uh, and uh, full valued range. So it's extension by Friedrichs. And as as the, in the previous talk, uh, this uh, L0 determines the boundary triple, boundary, uh, boundary operators gamma one, gamma two, uh, uh, such that uh, all of these uh, objects are related through the uh, relevant version of the green of the green formula this one next we introduce also and as in the previous talk we introduce a dynamical system which is controlled uh, by these operators boundary operator gamma gamma one it is dynamical system with boundary control it is well defined dynamical system and uh, uh, it is a well defined problem and it has the solution uft this f is in honor of the boundary control f and uh, this system possesses uh, standard attributes of uh, the dynamical system the outer space of controls and k excuse me i, I don't remember ah uh, k k as before also is a harmonic <laughs> absolute harmonic subspace it is the kernel of uh, it is the kernel of uh, the adjoint operator, exactly as in the previous talk. Uh, and uh, so we have the outer space of controls, the inner space of waves of states of the system, and the control operator, which uh, maps the control to the final state, to the final state. And uh, there is the connecting operator, the, the connecting operator, as in the talk by uh, Sergei Simonov. Uh, it is the uh, princi uh, principal uh, ingredient of uh, the boundary control method and uh, our approach to, uh, uh, to, to inverse problems. And now, uh, now let us uh, let, let us recognize what is corresponding factorization problem. Uh, in uh, the uh, outer space, there is a nest of there is a nest of delayed controls, family of delayed controls. Okay, it's clear, and the corresponding nest. Once again, this W. Uh, induces uh, the nest in the space of states in the inner space in this way okay as before and now assume that uh, uh, operator wt which creates waves which create creates uh, states uh, possesses uh, the diagonal the diagon such as the, the diagonal exists and has a full valued uh, range, roughly speaking. Then, uh, connected operator admits uh, triangular factorization of this form as before, uh, with uh, which is realized by the 
phase operator of uh, the square root of, of, of C. So uh, we have dynamical system, we have, uh, we have uh, connecting operator, uh, we have connecting operator and uh, we factorize this operator, we factorize this operator uh, along the nest of very natural object also, the nest of uh, delayed controls. And now I introduce the model. Uh, uh, this is the wave equation det which determines the evolution of the system. And L0 may be interpreted as uh, the operator dual to, in this sense, dual to the second derivative. And uh, just by analogy to this representation, we introduce the operator L0 in this form where Vt is the triangular factor, which was uh, determined uh, a, step, a step ago, a step, a step above. And uh, uh, we just define uh, this operator uh, by means of the standard operator, uh, uh, standard differential operator in controls and this triangular factor. And the thing is that, the thing is that uh, uh, by construction of this operator turns out to be uh, the uh, unitary copy of the operator L0, which acts, which acts in the inner space, acts in the inner space. Uh, and uh, this operator acts in the space of controls, but the space of controls is uh, a, a, functional, a, a functional space. It is a space of k-valued functions of time, depending on, uh, depending on time. And how does this machinery work? How does this machinery work in uh, applications, in inverse problems? Uh, it works in the following way. Uh, we, uh, first of all, we uh, set up uh, inverse problem as follows. Uh, it, it is just a generalization of a lot of uh, applications, a lot of uh, uh, concrete uh, inverse problems in, in applications. Uh, given ID, spectral ID, dynamical ID, Veil function, characteristic function, uh, spectral data, Dirichlet on a map, that, uh, hyperbolic Dirichlet on a map, and so on, so on, so on. Uh, by ID, we have to recover the operator L0, L0 or the same L0 uh, adjoint. Uh, this is the statement of the, of the inverse class of inverse problems. And uh, this uh, as a substantial uh, important class of these problems can be solved by can be solved by uh, the following uh, implications uh, by the following scheme first of all uh, given id we determine uh, the connecting operator it is a principal point of the boundary control method uh, the good data from the viewpoint of the BC method, uh, the good data is the data which determine, uh, which allows uh, to determine connecting operator. Okay, if it is done, then this operator can be factorized uh, by the use of the diagonal construction and then uh, get uh, uh, Functional model of the operator, uh, which is uh, which is required to be uh, recovered, and it is also uh, this model, this functional model solves the problem. Uh, just by philosophy, if you deal with uh, in this, uh, this uh, let's say domain with boundary. Uh, by the rule of uh, inverse problem, you can do whatever you wish at the boundary, but you cannot invade into the domain. So to recover uh, the original L0, L0 is impossible in principle, but uh, what we do, uh, we recover its 
relevant functional copy. For instance, if you fight for reconstruction of potential, then uh, having the, the full value functional model of this operator at the boundary, uh, to, uh, it, it is cheap to, to recover potential or density or metric, something like this. So uh, this is the theoretical background of uh, our approach to uh, inverse problems. And uh, uh, as example, very respectable example, uh, this uh, machinery uh, does work uh, in the ve uh, very serious prob uh, uh, problem of reconstruction of Riemann manifold of arbitrary topology, arbitrary me metric. And I would like to stress that uh, uh, I, I don't know, uh, there, uh, as far as the best of my knowledge, uh, there, there are no another uh, efficient procedures, uh, approaches, methods, which, uh, which give uh, the, same, the same result. Only factorization, which uh, lies in the background of, of the approach. And uh, this is the final model. Uh, the final model, uh, the philosophy which we publicize and propagate, try to, to propagate, uh, to, to, solve, to solve a wide and important class of inverse problems is to construct the canonical functional models, it is L0 tilde, of the re relevant operators like L0 tilde, that is to realize the triangular factorization Via, via inverse data, given inverse data uh, to, to construct uh, connecting operator and then uh, realize its uh, triangular factorization uh, along the relevant uh, nest of subspaces. Uh, thank you for your kind attention. Uh, okay, uh, let us thank Professor Bilshev for this talk and if anybody has a questions or comments please welcome so michael i asked you this many times but uh, <laughs> um, so this is for you know for higher dimensions uh, this is like working with the dirichlet or neumann map kind of data or spectral data meaning spectrum and the so but in some sense that's overdetermined data so how do you apply this philosophy to formally determine problems? Uh, Rakesh, look, first of all, uh, speaking, uh, speaking about, uh, speaking about uh, multidimensional problems like reconstruction of manifold, uh, to claim that, uh, to, to, uh, to count the parameters, it is not productive, it is not uh, natural and it is not reasonable. For instance, if you have, if you have uh, spectral, inverse spectral data, what is that? It is the spectrum points plus some functions at the boundary, right? The dimension of this, uh, of this uh, array, uh, uh, number array, array, is something like R3, maybe, I don't know. Okay. But, but nevertheless, uh, this data uh, allows uh, allow to, to recover the manifold uh, with metric tensor, which has much more components, uh, which uh, the, uh, the metric uh, curvature, whatever you wish, uh, at the manifold. Uh, nevertheless, if you if you deal with uh, dynamical Dirichlet uh, hyperbolic Dirichlet phenomenon map, then formally you can write it in the form of integral operator with the kernel, and the kernel have too much uh, parameters, something like this. But nevertheless, this uh, object uh, hyperbolic uh, hyperbolic Dirichlet phenomenon map is determined by spectral data in explicit form, in a sense. So how to how to count I, parameters? I, what is overdetermined problem? It is not clear. Okay. But uh, uh, Michael, uh, 
as I can understand, boundary control method is also overdetermined. Or, or no, the, the uh, same the same uh, data as in Dirichlet Volume map. Am I right? Serge, once again, once again, uh, you apply the boundary control method to recover a potential in a domain. If you deal with uh, spectral inverse data, they does not look to be overdetermined. They are not overdetermined, uh -huh. right? If you trivially ca count uh, the parameters, but if you take uh, as a data the hyperbolic uh, Dirichlet phenomenon map, then formally speaking, it is overdetermined. But uh -huh. it is it is not it is not correct. To say that is not correct because it is determined by spectral data in, in, in explicit form. It means that just we need uh, the proper characterization of Dirichlet, uh, of hyperbolic Dirichlet on one nomen map, but uh, it is not uh, known yet. Mm -hmm. That's I the see. point. I see. Thank you. I have another question related to so when you said that uh, when you do this reconstruction, uh, you know, in the, so you're also recovering the boundary of the manifold, correct? And so now in, I guess, just very elementary differential uh, topology, so the boundary of the manifold is points where, you know, the local coordinate system is on the half plane rather than the ball. So when you do the reconstruction, that comes out in your... Uh... Uh, Rakesh, please be, be patient with my English. No, no, no. Please, <laughs> please, please repeat, but little by little. <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> so you know, when we talk of manifold, when we talk of the boundary points, those are the points where, if you do a local coordinate, then the local coordinate is a hemisphere rather than a ball. Correct. That's how we define the boundary of a manifold. So you mean you mean uh, do uh, do I use uh, semi geodesical coordinates uh, to for no. so reconstruction? My question, or so what? my question is: uh, so when you're recovering a manifold and you say you can recover its boundary, how do you isolate the points which are on the boundary? How do you separate the interior points from the boundary points? I'm just curious. I'm sure it's a complicated procedure, but uh... wait, wait, wait. How how to select boundary points in the model? Something. Yes, right. Ah, Rakesh, it's very simple. Just, just believe that it is it is very simple. Uh, the, nah, nah. When you construct, uh, uh, I'm afraid. I, I, it's it, it is impossible to to something like this, Rakesh. Okay. Uh, we try we are trying to recover the manifold. Instead of that, we get uh, by our technique we get uh, some uh, isometrical copy of this manifold. It is a topological space, but as such, this topological space possesses some boundary and this boundary may be attached uh, by some isomorphism to the original boundary and when you attach uh, the abstract boundary to the original boundary you glue uh, you identify the corresponding points something like this i, I understand that it is not <laughs> It is not clear, but all right. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Just uh, the answer is that it is done. It is may. It is can be done. It can be done, and uh, it is a rather simple, uh, simple problem. Okay. May I ask another question? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, uh, many years ago, uh, there was a paper by uh, Simonson. Uh, maybe together with Santosa, but um, do you usually to know Neumann map in time domain uh, with, with some boundary? And after this publication, uh, I asked uh, Rakesh 
if you remember, if, is it correct when you, we use geophysical statement on the plane? We, we have Dirichlet to Neumann map on the plane. Can we, and Rakesh published a very interesting paper that there is uh, the Dirichlet to Neumann map guarantees the uniqueness uh, after uh, the plane, and like in geophysics. And what about your ideas? Uh, this can boundary control do the same if you measure only on the part of the plane, time like surface, and geophysics, like in geophysics. No, земле, мере, и все. Можно ли тогда применить вот вот идеи этого доклада и вообще цепочки доклада? Сережа, это это спич. Кому обращен? Ко мне или к Ракешу? Да нет, к тебе, конечно, это вопрос. Ага, слушаю тебя, да. А, ну, я, 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 ну, я повторю по-русски, так? Ну, попробую, давай. Ага. Вот. Ну, много лет назад Саймс и Сантоза опубликовали Дирешлету Нойман Мэп, Тайм Домейн, как в геофизике, и единственность. Довольно общие такие предположения. Потом я спросил как-то Ракеша письменно и где-то устно, можно ли это на плоскости сделать, как в геофизике? У него статья вышла прекрасная. Да, если Дирешли, то Нойман Мэп на плоскости, их все равно нулю, ну, ну, земная поверхность. Да, да, да. да. Под землей все однозначно определяется. Да. Условия общие. Вот, вот эти вот идеи этой вот цепочки докладов очень интересных, они приложимы вот к геофизике в такой постановке. На, на части плоскости Дирешли, то Нойман Мэп, Boundary Control. Или вот как мы делаем там... Сережа, Почему? больше того, ну, больше того, просто разработаны тесты, все это обсчитано, результаты есть, результаты достаточно приличные. Если ты хочешь, я тебе подборочку эту... Да, а, пожалуйста. Просто... Интересно, потому что вот Максим фактически это говорил о трехмерно, только он это в двух слайдах как-то упрятал, поскольку это еще не очень опубликовано. Да, это важно, конечно, если здесь что-то есть, возьмем в оборот. Спасибо. Все, да, будет сделано. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Uh, if not, then we can thank our speaker again.